like being on a racehorse that's tied up in the stall as opposed to out in the track. At times these things are uncontrollable machines and a racehorse would be likewise. If Steve Trinder's machine, for example, were to take off right at this moment, I'd still be here picking up the pieces off the ground. Welcome to Oran Park in Sydney. We're about to see some action today in the Western Underwriters Superbikes. They're out on the track warming up. There's going to be quite a battle out there and quite a surge of power. Let's go up now to the commentary position to John Smales and Will Hagen. And the field on the grid warming up for the first heat of the Western Underwriters Super in Insurance Superbike Series. Round seven, leg one at Oran Park. Over 12 laps of the Grand Prix circuit. It'll be a clutch start. And on pole position will be the man who's dominated the series so far this year, Malcolm Campbell on the Honda 1000. Campbell has so far taken eight wins, three seconds, and only failed to finish once in the seven in the six round so far held. Alongside him on the front row is the man who's won the series four times on the trot in the last four years, Rob Phyllis on the Suzuki Superbike. Next to him is Glenn Middlemas on the other Honda, so Phyllis sandwiched between two Hondas. Then comes Len Willing, the former Australian Grand Prix champion on the Kawasaki. Alongside him, the young starter, Steve Watts from Victoria on the Suzuki, then Michael Dawson on the Yamaha. Next comes Ben, uh, ben Middlemas is scratched, and Chris Oldfield moves into that position on bike 20. And alongside him on the front row is Neil Shivers on the Suzuki, then back to row two, Robert Holden on the Suzuki, Simon Jones on the Kawasaki, and Alan Blanco on the Kawasaki. But in all, there are four rows of bikes, 30 of them lined up on the grid, the, the most powerful ones pumping out about 130 horsepower, revving to nearly 12,000 revs. Some of the latest technology and most powerful machines in motorcycle racing, ready to go. And a few started to fudge, but from Malcolm Campbell, from pole position, leaps to the lead. Len Willings going with him, going beautifully. And a good start, too, on 69 to Steve Watts, the 23-year-old from Victoria. And you can see an enormously crowded field. 57 on the outside there. But Campbell, the series leader, no, it's is Willing. in second place yes. behind Willings. So Willing really has got cracking well. The GPZ 900 Kawasaki. Back in third position is Glenn Middlemas on the second of the Hondas. His brother Ben badly injured in a race crash at Oran Park last meeting, which is why he's retired today. He's expected back into motorcycle racing later this year. Off the bridge for the first of 12 circuits of the 2.62 kilometer Grand Prix circuit. That's Glenn Middlemas in third position in the blue leathers. Gee, they have to change direction quickly as they go over the dog leg and Willing, Campbell, Middlemas. Look at that shot as they come down into the deep and slam on the brakes hard when the suspension's on compression. It was a 120.17 opening lap at 116.6 kilometers an hour standing. Campbell closing. The big Honda not as handy changing direction as Phyllis's Suzuki-based bike. But uh, that's further back in the field at this stage. 53 is in fourth place, Robert Holden. Robert Holden has one of only two race-kitted GSX 750R Suzukis. It's pumping out about 125 horsepower with a race kit that's worth $10,000. The bike itself worth only $5,600. Campbell eyeing him up. And Middlemas leading five. And four others. And he's going to have a lot of trouble in there because there's a lot of really quick runners in here wanting to get up with the leading pair. Phyllis is there, you see, behind Holden getting up with the bunch. So the two race-kitted Suzukis are in the pack there. Holden's the first to charge out they go down the straight and walking away from Willing as Campbell goes for up at the front Len Willing and down is 67 a couple of bikes down in fact
there's the leader, Malcolm Campbell, going after his ninth win in the Western Underwriter Superbike Series. Behind him, Len Willing, currently fourth in the title, hasn't had a win in the series so far. Would quite like to do so, of course. Well, he's had four thirds, five fourths, and two fifths. So he, along with Glenn Middlemas and Malcolm Campbell, have all had 11 point scoring results. And that's the point score as it stands at the moment. As you can see, Campbell virtually dominates the series. If he wins both rounds here at Oran Park today, he and Phyllis come second in both rounds. Campbell will only need to score another three points to win the Western Underwriter Series for the year. On to their third lap. And already opening a big gap on third place. Like three, four seconds. Is Robert Holden, the New Zealander, and right behind him is Robbie Phyllis, four times Western Underwriters Series champion, and the king until this year of superbike racing in Australia. You can see them there, Holden on 53, the blue bike. Phyllis coming underneath him now on bike 32, and Robbie Phyllis takes over third position. And now it'll be interesting to see whether Robbie Phyllis can haul back the leading two competitors with nine laps remaining of the 2.62 kilometre Grand Prix yes, circuit. Glenn Middlemas that heads the bunch. He's back in fifth place with quite a close bunch behind him. As Holden in fourth, now headed by Phyllis in third, move away. And Phyllis moves towards the leader, perhaps. Glenn Middlemas, incidentally, electing to ride the 860cc Honda Superbike rather than the 1000, which was available to him. The Oran Park circuit has been rebuilt virtually this year. This is our first. Oh, and Phyllis just rounding the bike. That'll be a new foot bag when he gets back to the pits and probably a new muffler as well. Let's see just how close Robbie Phyllis came to disaster there as he literally sets the track on fire. And there he is. Blow him up, the new father of a three weeks old girl, Georgia. Just three weeks ago, his wife had their first child. And at the last, uh, the last thing that Robbie Phyllis can afford at the moment is to have Georgia on his mind as he chases first and second place in the Western Underwriter Series. Holden, who put in such a grand ride in the first of the Castrol six hours to be held at Oran Park here last year, with Neil Chivers sharing a 750 Suzuki Katana, they rode their hearts out and brought it home to third place. And Holden played a very big part in that. Look how quickly they come over that dog leg, with absolutely a few centimetres between them, the edge of the track and disaster. The leaders, Malcolm Campbell, now with a handy two-second gap over Len Willing. There. On the Kawasaki Superbike. Taken a lot of development to get that Kawasaki working. But now Len Willing is proving that uh, it's all come together. 1.1 seconds, first to second place. paved corner and then over the bridge Campbell really having to be smooth and cautious with the bike it probably doesn't handle as well as the 750 cc based Suzuki's which are a later model bike than the one on which Campbell's bike is based that's about a in design terms a three or four year old model whereas the Suzuki's on which Robert Holden and Robbie Phyllis's bikes are based are really just current bikes, only just onto the market a few months ago. Campbell now dialing in an enormous amount of power and tremendous mid-range torque too. Look at him making the bike squirm and work. And he starts thumping the 130 horsepower through a very small patch of rubber at the back of the bike. Supremely fit 
man who the year before, last year in 83, had a great year. Last year had an absolute disaster. Fell in Malaysia back in May. Was tossed off here in practices last year, Malcolm Campbell. Hit a slow bike that pulled across his bows and couldn't compete in this round last year. That's Chris Oldfield, Chris Oldfield, who two years ago had a monstrous crash right there coming up to the bridge, and is now riding the Bennett Honda VF1000 Superbike, formerly campaigned by Rod Cox in New South Wales. Oldfield's filled in a couple of times for the official team Honda this year. Former Australian champion and Grand Prix winner. Campbell again, now winding it on. And again, the way the bike bucks and wallows around tells him just how hard it's working and how close he is to the limit. Willings bike looking prettier through there. You can see where Willings, how Willings hanging on to Campbell, working it harder through the tight stuff, but with not quite enough front out of corners and down the straight. And the frustration for Robbie Phyllis back in third position because he seems to be able to make no dent on these two leaders and Phyllis desperately needs to beat Malcolm Campbell in this round to stay in touch in the Western Underwriters Superbike Series. There's Phyllis coming up over the bridge now as Campbell exits on the other side. Healing into the S's now. Phyllis has 750cc based machine on a, in standard form that bike develops 100 horsepower in the race kitted form that Robbie's riding, around 130 horsepower. Incredible power out of 750cc's is oil cooled. It uses its own lubricating oil to circulate through the radiator and cool the engine. And therefore it's very small in the galleries and carries less fluid and is only 176 kg in standard road form. About 30 kg lighter than the comparable FZ750 Yamaha. Robbie Phyllis has never worked as hard as he's worked this year and for less effect. He over revved and damaged the engine while leading his first race. There's Holden now coming up to again challenge Phyllis. And then he tossed the machine away at the last Oran Park meeting, which was the third round of the Western Underwriter Superbike Series. Had the sprocket bolt shear at Winton because so much power is being put through the machine for Rob Phyllis, it's been a very disappointing season. Holding similar machine, but the stage two kit, say around 125 horsepower, or another way of looking at it is that it's only just a little bit under half the power of, say, the Volvo Turbo that's racing in Group A racing, and obviously pushing around about 10 times as much weight in the case of the Volvo. So you can imagine, if you work hard enough, just what sort of throttle response and acceleration you get out of a machine like that. Still Oldfield is fifth. Sixth then is in number four, Glenn Middlemas, in company with a couple of other bikes. That's Craig Trinder stopped just under the bridge as Phyllis now with Holden closer comes by still third and fourth place and the leader Campbell coming up now to lap traffic willing hounding him still not far behind him but wishes he were closer About 0.8 of a second. And the gap back to Robbie Phyllis is 8.17 seconds. So Phyllis's task almost impossible in this 12 lap race. Lapping Keith Green Tree on 52. Who was looking all the wrong way and probably got the shock of his life when Malcolm came underneath him. 
only two laps remaining, but Len Willing close enough to keep the pressure right on Malcolm Campbell, who cannot afford to make one mistake. Jeff French going out of frame in the foreground, 17, the son of John French, car racing driver. 74 is Steve Harley, Kawasaki 1000, who wisely gets out of the way. Willing closing up slightly under traffic. One and a half laps remaining. And Len Willing, a notorious late breaker. Willing has 97 points in the series to Campbell's 156. Campbell will go to 171 with this win. Willing to 109. That is a desperately quick section of circuit where a good rider like Campbell can make up a lot of ground and you really get the effect there from that camera position as they come around now to get the blue flag for the last lap started. Campbell and Willing trying to find a little bit of magic, a little bit of speed to sweep through that corner so fast and he does to be desperate under brakes to find speed everywhere he can as he goes for broke Len Willing on 49. Look at him. Can he catch Malcolm Campbell napping? Has he got something up his sleeve? He hasn't, I can assure you. He's just working harder. Classic line here. Big wide entry. Flies into the corner. And I think BP would be too late. He'd be looking for it in a run off the bridge to the S's. But I doubt that he'll find Campbell slow enough there to let him in. But at this stage, he can't even plan. He's just got to go for it everywhere, as fast as he can. Campbell switched on again now, dialing in harder. Pulling just a couple of tenths. But Willing, and that's Ian Perro. Ian Perro down, yes. Ian Perro. No, it's not. Like nine. John Wood. John Wood, not Perro. Campbell. Campbell being rounded up on the outside by Willing. Willing going for the outside run on him, side by side. Campbell pulls the wheelie, they're side by side, can you pick it, it's Campbell. Campbell from Len Willing, half a bike length in it. Fantastic stuff. Robert Holden takes third position, and Robbie Phyllis goes through in fourth. Robert Holden, 8.8 .8 seconds in arrears, and Campbell there delighted actually with that challenge and great bit of riding from Len Willing. <laughs> Probably wondering how on earth he kept the tyres hanging onto the track but a most meritorious effort there by Willing there's third place two on 53 Robert Holden and also in the picture Jeff French again and here we see Len Willing starting to come up and throw his challenge on Malcolm Campbell through Bitcher Pave corner up over the bridge And round seven, leg one of the Western Underwriters Insurance Superbike Series for 1985. The winner, Malcolm Campbell, but only just from Len Willing on the Kawasaki with Robert Holden on the Suzuki 750 in third position. And the delighted Malcolm Campbell going past a good crowd here at Oran Park on a lovely day, a typically fine sunny but cool Sydney winter day and plenty of people appreciating the tough Tasmanian who's known all the, the highs and lows of motorcycle racing without any question but who at the moment looks like stitching up the first superbike series for Honda since Andrew Johnson won the Victorian series which started the whole business before it went into state back in 1980. Ever since then Honda has tried to win it but it's been won by Robbie Phyllis on a dealer-entered Suzuki to the great frustration of Honda. But let's hear now from the race winner with Peter Wilkins. Well, congratulations. With a couple of laps to go and look comfortable, they're not quite uh, near the end there. Were you looking more behind or in front of you? Uh, I was keeping a good eye on Lenny. Uh, probably one of the best performances he's put in on that bike, actually. And uh, he definitely kept me honest in a great race. Coming up to the final quarter there, did you expect him to pull such a trick there? Uh, I thought he'd be around me there somewhere, but I knew I did have a little bit of run to the line, so I wasn't expecting that. Congratulations, good luck to the next round. Good, thanks a lot. The 
strong field coming to the line now for the 10 lap second round of the Australian 250cc Australian Road Race Championship and the bikes to grid up according to their finishing order in the first round of the series at Simmons Plain. So on pole position is Michael Dowson on the Yamaha 250. Alongside him, Jeff McNaughton on the Honda, then Donny Osborne, the Victorian Flash on the Honda. Beside him, Tony Hinton on the Ro Rotax, then Teen Scout on the Yamaha. Craig Morris on the Yamaha, Bruce Woodley on the Yamaha Power Flow, and then the defending Australian champion, Jeffrey Sale on the Yamaha 250. Ready for a start. bikes at the start and it's Hinton into the lead on 43 being followed by uh, Sluice on 29 he's edged out though then by Dous no by on 18 it's uh, Donny Osmond from Victoria oh running very wide here comes Osmond down the inside can't do it on Hinton and drops back behind Dowson's fourth on one 